talk about deleting email and reasons to delete email. When I go into organizations and we, we do some Outlook training, um, a lot of people who have, I don't know, thousands and thousands of emails in their inbox back to, I think, when Outlook was first released, they have kept them for years and years and years. And when I ask why they don't delete them, they say, well, I'm keeping it just in case. I would like for you to take just in case off the table and rather challenge yourself to make a case for not deleting an email. So when you read an email, the question to ask yourself is, why wouldn't I delete this? Not do I need to keep it, because do I need to keep it as, yeah, I'd better just in case. But why not delete it? A lot of you, if you look back through your email inboxes, would see things like, uh, where do you want to have the company picnic, and it's a 90-foot discussion thread, and you kept all of those just in case. So I challenge you to go through your email inboxes and uh, start deleting things, uh, and now's as good a time as any. For any of you that may be transitioning to 2007 and are attending this webinar just to kind of get familiar with the new version, this is a great time. Rules are a great, great way to do that, and we'll cover that today. Sorting, fil uh, foldering, and deleting email is another great way to stay cleaned up. And then foldering outside the inbox. Now, I sometimes put that third bullet point up, and I can hear IT people all over the country just wincing. To the extent that you can folder outside your inbox is really dependent on how your organization manages uh, its data. There is a way to do it. We'll show you how to do it, but you want to make sure that if you're foldering outside the inbox that you are not circumventing policy and that whatever you're foldering outside of inbox is backed up appropriately. If you've taken webinars with me before, you know I'm a big fan of the shortcut key. Control-Shift-E creates a new folder. So let's see how we work with folders. Okay, coming back to Outlook now. I'm going to switch my screen over to Outlook. I see a few um, emails coming up on the screen. Let me arrange things here so they might be a little more visible for you. I'm going to take a few moments because I'm pretty sure that some of your connections may not be as fast as uh, what I'm seeing here on my desktop. So hopefully by now you guys are all seeing my uh, Outlook inbox. Okay. So you can see I've got quite a folder structure over here on the left because I'm all about my folders. I don't want to see a whole lot of information just there in the inbox. I really want to see it all in the folders. Now I'm looking at some, I pull in some old emails here so we can do the training, but uh, uh, my actual inbox is a lot cleaner than this. Okay, so Control-Shift-E. So here I am at the inbox and I'm going to press Control-Shift-E and right away it brings up the Create New Folder dialog box in which I can put a new folder. I'm going to call this one Airline Email. Since it will contain email and post items, I'll leave the folder contains alone. And right now I want to put that under the inbox, but if I wanted to make it a subfolder of something else, let's say travel, I could. But I'm just going to go ahead and make it a subfolder of the inbox. And we'll click OK here. And now you'll see I have a folder, and let me fire up a little magnifier here. So I have a folder there under the inbox called Airline Email. So it's great that I have a folder, and I can certainly drag email to that folder. So let me drag one of these United Airlines off to the folder. I can certainly do that, and that helps. We're going to, when we write rules, show you how to get these United Airlines emails to never hit your inbox. They will go straight into something called airline email.